the different types of market structures that exist for firms. But now we have to cover how firms actually employ workers and how that even works, because workers are incredibly important to how a firm operates. So we have the factor market. The factor market is a market from businesses for workers. It operates very similarly to the basic supply and demand that we saw in Unit 2, with supply being an upward sloping line and demand being downward sloping. But this time we have labor demand and labor supply. Labor demand is the demand from firms for labor, and it's an inverse relationship between wage and quantity of labor demanded. Labor supply, just like supply, is an upward sloping line, and it shows the supply of labor at different wages. So let's see this in an actual graph. So for the factor market, for the actual market, for all firms, supply, upward sloping line, demand, downward sloping. But this time, the x-axis is quantity of labor, the y-axis is wage. Wage is the amount workers are paid, basic, similar to price on a supply and demand graph, but remember it's wage, and here's the quantity of labor on X. So for a market, it's just basic supply and demand, but for firms, demand equals marginal revenue product, which we'll cover later, and supply is marginal revenue cost, and supply is constant. That's because for a firm in a specific industry, there is a constant amount of workers that you can possibly employ. So make sure you remember, for firms, supply is constant. This is the same labor market graph, but this time we have minimum wage. So for late, for the factor market and for wages, many of the time you're going to see a minimum wage that's above equilibrium. You're never going to see a minimum wage below equilibrium. Minimum wage is very similar to a price floor. It's basically the minimum a, a wage can actually be. There will never be a price ceiling. We never have a maximum wage. It's always going to be a minimum wage, similar to this. And it operates very similar to supply and demand. If you have a price, if you have a wage above equilibrium, you're going to see a surplus in the job. A wage below equilibrium, you'll have a shortage of the job. So make sure you remember that. Make sure you understand and how to apply that for a labor market graph. So now we have the factor, factor demand and supply and how they shift. Shifts for demand include the price of a product. If, a pro if the price of a product goes up, labor becomes more valuable and expensive because when we can produce more and more expensive products, we value the, those workers more. Productivity is how productive a worker can be. A more productive worker is more expensive and requires a higher wage. And change in price of raw materials, that can make a worker more or less valuable. Now there's several shifts for supply. Basically, it's anything that makes the ability to get a job easier. That will shift it to the right, the opposite shifts to the left. So things like education and training, availability of alternative options, immigration, cultural expectation, working conditions, preferences for leisure. These make getting a job easier and easier. So it makes the supply larger and larger. So you shift it to the right if any of these change. So now we have different types of market. We have different types of firms in the factor market. We'll just cover two, perfect labor competition and a monopsony. Perfect labor competition is similar to perfect competition, but this time it's for labor. The labor market is different. In di is different. There's many different characteristics. It's many small firms similar to perfect competition. There's many workers with identical skills in this firm. Wage is constant, and workers are wage takers, which means they take the wage from the firm. They do not, and they take the wage from the firm or the market, and they do not negotiate. This is because everyone is paid the same. If you're ever paid more, no firm is going to pay you more because they all have identical skills, right? That's the basic idea of perfect labor competition. And we have a graph for perfect labor competition. So for the industry or market, supply and demand. Pay, basic, you'll remember this. But for the firm, demand, downward sloping, supply, linear, just like this. Now, MRC equals MRP is now the ma profit maximizing point. Just remember, it's not MR equals MC, it's MRP equals M MRC. MRP being, being the marginal revenue product and MRC being, being the marginal revenue cost. So MRC is just the marginal cost, basically. MRP in this situation is just the MR, the marginal revenue and they're profit maximizing here. So make sure you remember a perfect labor competition graph and how to graph it. So monopsony operates pretty similar, similar to a monopoly. It's one major firm hiring workers like a monopoly, relatively immobile workers, so they can't move much between firms or move much in like geography. 
firm is wage maker, so firms decide the wage they pay. This is because there's only one firm and workers actually have different skills, so firms can decide how much they pay their workers. So they can determine, so they are wage makers, they have that control. Kind of like how a monopoly can determine price. And here's a monopsony graph, so make sure you remember this. MRP here, demand equals MRP, but instead supply is not a linear line, but it's a constant, it's a, it's not a constant line like in perfect competition, but rather a linear line, kind of like this. And make sure you remember MRC is above the supply curve, kind of like this. Remember how a monopoly, that marginal revenue was below demand, it's quite, kind of similar to how MRC is above supply. It's basically MRC above supply for monopsony and monopoly demand, marginal revenues below demand. Make sure you remember that. MRC is above the supply curve. Profit maximizing is still MRP equals MRC. So make sure you remember this graph and this graph, and you should be good for this unit. And make sure you understand factor demand and supply, how to shift them, understand how to actually graph the labor markets, and that's all you really need to know from this unit.